Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I'll be talking about the book The Spiritual Combat by Lorenzo Scupoli. The book was published in 1589 by Father Lorenzo Scupoli, who was an Italian priest. And fun fact about the book, it was actually the favorite book of St. Francis de Sales. In The Spiritual Combat, Father Lorenzo explains how we should deal with specific situations that every Christian or Catholic must face. For example, what we should do when we experience temptations of the flesh, or um, how to acquire specific virtues, for example, how to combat sloth or talkativeness. So let's start with the summary. First, Father Lorenzo explains what Christian perfection consists of and what actually is the spiritual combat. He says that many people think that Christian perfection consists in frequenting the sacraments, going to Mass really often, doing a lot of penance, fasting, and meditating. But he says that that's not true. The things mentioned before multiply grace, but that's not what Christian perfection consists of. He says that Christian perfection is when we acknowledge God's goodness and our nothingness, if we reject our own will and submit to God's will, and if we do all of that for the glory of God and because he so wills and merits it. In order to achieve that, Father Lorenzo lists four weapons that we can use. The first one being distrust of self, the second one trust in God, the third one spiritual exercises, and the fourth one prayer. What Father Lorenzo means by the spiritual exercises are not the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, I've made a video about those as well, but he means that we practice virtues and we actively choose situations where we can practice those virtues. And um, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola at that time were only like 20 years old and St. Ignatius wasn't even canonized yet. In order to achieve the first weapon or in order to use the first weapon better, there are three means that we can do. The first one is we should consider our own nothingness and inability to, to do any good. The second one is to ask for that grace from God. So we actively should ask God in prayer to give us distrust of self. And the third one is to fear our own judgment and our own sinfulness. We should think about how often we have fallen into sin and that should be a reason for us to distrust ourselves. And in order to acquire trust in God, Father Lorenzo has four things that we can do. The first one being, again, to ask it from God. So, again, to just pray for it. The second one is to admire how nothing is impossible for God. The third one is to meditate on the fact that no one who has ever trusted in God has ever been confounded. And the fourth one is whenever we do some duty and whenever we have to do so something, we should think about our own weakness and then uh, turn to God and admire his goodness and his almightiness. Father Lorenzo also dedicates a part of his book to talk about pride. For example, he says that the bad feeling, the inquietude that we feel after committing a sin, many people mistake for a virtue, while in fact that might just be our wounded pride. He also explains that we should use every sin we commit as a source of humility because again we can think about how weak we are and how fast we can fall into sin. What I found really interesting was that Father Lorenzo says that God allows us to fall into sin in proportion to our pride which is the reason why Mary was without sin because Mary was infinitely humble or at least extremely humble and that was the reason why she didn't fall into any sin. He also gives us the advice to praise God whenever we have praised ourselves. And then he continues to talk about sin in general. For example, he says that if we fall into sin, we should continue to fight as if we were not wounded. Then he also explains why it's so difficult to actually follow the Ten Commandments and why we always kind of want to belong to the world. He says that humans have two types of wills, the superior will that is called rational will and the inferior will of the senses. And that rational will is constantly torn in between the divine will, which would, for example, be the Ten Commandments, and the will of the senses. 
He advises us that whenever we experience an inordinate desire, so whenever we feel that will of the senses, we should first reject that temptation. And then when the temptation is over, we should excite that anew. We should find an opportunity to practice that and to reject it even more. And then he says to repeat that again. But he's, he warns us to not use that uh, technique for temptations of the flesh. Then Father Lorenzo gives advice on specific vices and temptations. I would like to start with the temptations of the flesh, so impurity. First, Father Lorenzo says that we should determine whether the temptation comes from the inside or from the outside. If it's an external cause, we can help that with modesty and with avoiding bad company. And if the, the cause is internal, we have to pray. He also says that many uh, books um, advise us to meditate on how bad those sins of impurity are in order that we not commit them. But Father Lorenzo says that that might be counterproductive because we might take pleasure in meditating on those sins and on how bad they are and commit a mortal sin again. In general, the advice is to avoid thinking about impurity altogether, to, to just avoid anything that might cause a temptation of the flesh. He says that when we are in doubt whether we have consented to an impure thought, we should not think about it, whether it, we actually have consented, how our thought process was, etc., and like we might do with other sins. But he says that we should go to confession and just explain to the priest our thought process and be contented with his answer and what he thinks, whether that was a sin or whether that just was a, a temptation. He also warns us to not rejoice over the fact that we maybe have not committed any sin of impurity in a long time because he says that especially in the sixth commandment, the work that we have put into acquiring the virtue of chastity, for example, within nine years, might be ruined within half an hour. He also explains how we could overcome sloth and talkativeness. So let's start with sloth. He says that, for example, whenever we get a task, we should try to do it immediately. Or we should never come late because coming late might turn into a habit and just become worse. He also explains that whenever we have a big chunk of work to do, for example, an hour of prayer, and that seems really discouraging to us, we should start with praying for eight minutes and pretend if, as if that was everything that we had to pray for this day. And that's actually a thing among productivity YouTubers. Uh, I think it's called the five minute rule, where you just pretend that you will um, start that task and just do it for five minutes. And after five minutes, you can pause if you want to. And the trick is that after five minutes, you already started and you will most likely continue to do it. And then uh, he explains a little bit about talkativeness and he says that much talks comes from much pride and he explains a little bit what talkativeness is and um, why it's bad with what it is connected. He says that talkativeness is the mother of idleness, the evidence of ignorance and folly, the door of slander, the purveyor of falsehood and the damper of fervent devotion. In the spiritual combat, Father Lorenzo says that there are three types of sinners and he explains how the devil tries to tempt each of them and what the solution for them would be. The first type of sinner is the sinner who doesn't even think of stopping to sin. And what the devil tries to do here is he tries to draw him deeper into sin and he hides every possibility from him that might show him his sinfulness. The solution here is that the sinner should um, welcome or accept every thought that shows him his sinfulness and that shows him that he should change his life. The second type of sinner is the sinner who actually tries to change his life but fails at doing that. And what the devil does here is he tells him you can do that tomorrow. And um, the solution here would be to um, promptly obey as I've said before about sloth, to just, whenever we have a task, to do it immediately. And Father Lorenzo explains why good resolutions fail. He says that oftentimes resolutions fail because we're not humble, 
because we admire the virtue we want to acquire and not the struggle that comes with it. He says that we should actually love the struggle that comes with admiring a virtue more than the virtue itself. And he says that oftentimes we make resolutions when we are really consoled and then a time of desolation comes and everything changes and we lose all our motivation. And the third type of sinner is the sinner who thinks of himself that he already is on the way to sanctity and that he already is a saint. And um, the problem here is that the devil shows that sinner only his resolutions and the sinner admires his resolutions before he has uh, even um, fulfilled them. And Father Lorenzo says that it is more easy to convert and bring back an open sinner to the path of truth than the man whose sin is hidden and mantled with a semblance of virtue. Lastly, Father Lorenzo talks about how we can acquire virtues. And he says that it's probably not a good idea if we choose to practice a virtue a day and spread it throughout the week. So we have seven virtues on the seven days of the week. And he also says that it's not a good idea to dedicate specific times to practice specific virtues, because that way we rob ourselves of valuable opportunities to practice virtues whenever an opportunity in our life occurs. He also says that we should choose to practice one virtue at a time and not try to acquire all virtues at once. We should choose the virtue that we lack most and then all virtues are connected with each other and a person that has one virtue will soon have the remaining ones as well. And he says that reading all books in this world combined will not teach us that much about how we should practice virtues as meditating on the crucifixion of Jesus. He says that some saints um, describe the crucifixion as a loving hell of voluntary sufferings. And Father Lorenzo explains that the biggest suffering for Jesus during his crucifixion was that he had to think of the people that would be damned in spite of his crucifixion. Father Lorenzo also says that um, Jesus didn't only pay for the sins that were committed, but also for sins that never happened. Because through the, his death on the cross, Jesus prevented some sins from even happening. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. I would give this book 10 out of 10 stars because I found it very helpful and extremely interesting. I've read the book twice so far. And what I liked was that uh, Father Lorenzo covered a variety of topics, but still went deep enough to give you specific advice and to really help you in your everyday life or to understand um, some topics better. I found it was pretty similar to the introduction to the devout life, to be honest. And the difference between, for example, the spiritual combat and the imitation of Christ, which I didn't like that much, is that the spiritual combat is gentler. Because, for example, in The Imitation of Christ, you are addressed as a worm, and it's pretty brutal. That's been it for today. See you next week. God bless, and bye!